The New York Rangers have selected EJ Emery with the 30th overall pick in the 2024 NHL Draft in the first round. And honestly, I am very happy with this selection. He was actually one of the players who I was really kind of keen on the Rangers taking with this pick here. If they weren't going to trade up or down, I figured he could be a phenomenal selection at pick 30 here. I definitely am very happy with this move. I think he's a very talented defensive defenseman with a possible decent offensive game one day, but just an overall very athletic fast skater, good shutdown defenseman, very sound defensively, and could be a great top four caliber defense in one day in the NHL. So we're going to kind of break down his play, where he's played in the past, his size, his skills, his weaknesses, all of that good stuff in today's video. And before we carry on here, he is wearing number six on the white jersey team there for the US NTDP, playing against a USHL team Fargo. So definitely keep an eye on him in these clips. But taking a look here at the prospect rankings, Consolidated ranking had him number 29, Elite Prospects 31, Bob McKenzie 27, and Craig Button 16, McKean's Hockey number 20, Flow Hockey 23. FC Hockey 24 and Daily Faceoff had him at number 18 there. And this is a prospect who have actually gotten to watch a bit in the past as well. He ended up playing seven games with Team USA at the U18 tournament, winning the silver medal there. I got to watch him a decent amount. He showed quite a bit offensively, I thought, for a defensive defenseman. Put up some good points there in those seven games played. And we'll take a look at the stats in a bit. But I do think he played pretty good in that tournament. I got to watch all seven games there. So I have watched a decent amount of him in the past. And one player that he said he looks up to and watches quite a bit, trying to emulate some of his game, is a guy named Keandre Miller, who is obviously a New York Rangers player right now as well. So I think that's pretty cool to see a Rangers player is a guy who we actually watched a lot, he said, and look kind of looks up to. So that's pretty cool to see there and should be, you know, a decent kind of mentor for him as well, possibly if he obviously Keandre Miller and him could have a good connection there. That could be pretty cool. Both, you know, US and TDP guys as well. So nice little connection there for EJ and Keandre. But carrying on here, though, he is a six foot three 185 pound defenseman, good size there, you know, solid weight, pretty strong guy out there. He is a right handed shot defenseman, plays on the right side as well. So, you know, kind of a need for this team eventually. Got in a right handed guy. We added in a good defensive defenseman named Drew Fortescue out of the U.S. program last year. He's a left handed guy. So, adding in a right side defenseman there is more of a defensive guy out of the U.S. And TDP is not a bad idea at all. And he is committed to go play at the University of North Dakota next season as well. So, a very good D1 program is going to play at for. Or I would imagine two seasons, probably at least there. If he goes two seasons, then goes pro to the HL for one. And then he's maybe ready in four years, possibly at the NHL level. We'll have to wait and see, obviously. But I would guess at least one or two seasons at the college level. And there's also a pretty cool connection as well. Back in 2022, 2023, and one of the Rangers' current assistant coaches under Peter Laviolette, Dan Muse, was the head coach of the US and TDP junior team in the USHL there, where EJ Emery actually played on that team. So there is a connection there as well. Dan Muse was the head coaching a guy like EJ Emery at the US program there. So nice little connection there. That's pretty cool to see. But in general, there seems like a great prospect. I'm sure, you know, Dan probably talked a bit about him, I'd imagine, to the, you know, the scouts and obviously Chris Drury, but nice. Nice little kind of connection there as well. He is a guy who formerly played football as well. I believe he said up until he's 13 years old. Then he stopped playing. He used to be a running back, safety, wide receiver. And his dad, although, you know, EJ was born in Canada, in Surrey, BC, he represents Team USA there because his dad is American. I believe he was born in California. He ended up playing, you know, D1 football there for, I believe it was Cal Fullerton State University. And then he ended up playing a bit in the CFL as well. So the pro league over here in Canada. I'm Canadian, by the way, as well, just in case you guys didn't know. But he ended up playing in the CFL for a bit there, a couple seasons. And so that's pretty cool there. His dad played in the CFL there, pro football player. Apparently he was very athletic as well, EJ said. So I'm sure that's where he gets some of his athleticism from. But overall, EJ seems like a very solid prospect. He also was only 18 years old, turning 19 on March 30th. So a very, very young prospect. will be 18 for this entire season at the college level there. So hopefully he can have a monster season with the North Dakota team at the D1 level. Next up here, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more New York Rangers content. I post every single day and I'll also have a full draft recap of the rest of the prospects as well in a later video coming up in the following days. So definitely stay tuned for that and a ton more New York Rangers content. But carrying on here and taking a look at his stats and after that, we'll take a look at his play style, weaknesses and strengths. And now taking a look here at some of his stats with the U.S. National U18 team ended up having 61 games played, 16 points 
points. All of them were assists, no goals there, had 61 penalty minutes, and was a plus 34. And some of those games are against some college teams as well, so it's not like they're playing, you know, a bunch of, like, low-tier teams. Some of those games were against D1 programs like Boston University and stuff like that, so definitely some very good competition. And against some USHL teams, just them, he ended up having 27 games played there, six assists, had 30 penalty minutes, and was a plus five. So overall, not too bad at all. The numbers are decent for a obvious guy who's more of a, a shutdown defensive defenseman there. He's got a very good defensive game. The offensive game is definitely a work in progress, but overall, not too terrible. And then at the U18 tournament there, though, where they won the silver medal against Team Canada, where they lost in the finals there, he ended up having seven games played, six assists, no goals, I watched every single game there. I thought it was quite fantastic. It was a plus 15. Ended up playing some great overall hockey. And definitely showed quite a bit offensively to what he could have you know, upside-wise. Right now, he's not some great offensive guy. But he definitely can have a better offensive game than I think what he's shown so far You know, with the National Development Program there. So hopefully, they can obviously grow on that side of things there and really kind of develop his overall offensive game to be something decent to where he could be kind of a more like a kind of two-way guy than just a more defensive guy at the NHL level possibly one day. And back in 2022-2023, he ended up having with the U-17 national team there, 60 games played, 2 goals, 10 assists, 12 total points, not too bad. And against USHL teams with the junior team there for the U.S. program, ended up having 39 games played, 1 goal, 8 assists, 9 total points. And also that season with the U-17 Team USA squad at that tournament, ended up having 7 games played, 1 goal, and 1 assist. So not too bad there at all. Definitely has a bit of offensive upside, but nothing too crazy. So now let's take a look here at kind of what he brings, his play style, his weaknesses, and his strengths here. Starting off, I would definitely say his biggest strength is his athleticism and skating. He's a very quick, very fast, very agile, explosive, great acceleration player. He's good backwards, forwards, has good strides. Just an all-around phenomenal athlete. And he is known at truly being an elite athlete, especially for his size as well. I mean, he's six foot three. He's a big mobile defender. Great skater, especially for his size as well. He's not like he's, you know, some 5'10, 5'11 guy that we kind of undersized. He's a big six foot three guy, you know, 185 pounds. Could add on some more muscle there, but great athlete. His athleticism and skating ability is through the roof, and that is definitely his biggest strength of his game. But he's also a great defensive player as well. Very good defensive kind of shutdown guy. Good penalty killer. That's kind of what he's known for as well, as being a good defensive penalty killer, which is definitely a positive. He's good at stopping the opposing team on rushes as well. He also has a very good defensive stick there. Good poke checker, good stick lifter. His defensive stick is definitely a big plus in my opinion. He also is a pretty good puck mover as well. He's got good passing ability, you know, good at breaking out the puck there. Decent overall puck mover, but definitely could work on that and kind of get better in that area, which he can do for all areas of his game. Obviously, he's still very young, only 18 years old. Every area of his game, you hopefully can kind of develop and get better, but his puck moving is quite good, but definitely could use some improvement and overall just kind of get better in that area. But his overall kind of offensive game is really the kind of one and only big issue right now that people kind of see out of his game. He obviously has some decent offensive production for a more kind of shut down defensive guy, but he obviously is not going to be a power play guy. And at the NHL level, might not be some, you know, much of an offensive guy, honestly, at all. But he definitely could be a perfect kind of compliment guy to someone like Adam Fox. Although he's a right-handed guy, he's not going to probably play alongside Foxy. You get what I'm saying there? If he's alongside a very good offensive guy, he definitely could fit quite well in that kind of a role, being a very good kind of you know, top four caliber defenseman, being a true you know top four caliber guy, but maybe being a more obviously kind of defensive guy than an offense or even two-way guy at the NHL level. But if he can develop that offensive game as well, he could truly be a very, very good top four caliber defenseman at the NHL level one day. And I would definitely say also has a pretty high defensive hockey IQ as well, which is quite important. But in general there, I think he has a very high upside with his athleticism, his skating ability, his size there, him being a right-handed shot as well, which is kind of a nice little bonus there. Being a penalty killer, great defensively, good puck mover, you know, good passing, good vision there. Especially if he can work on his offensive game, he could be a true, you know, top pairing, top four caliber defenseman at the NHL level. And either way, he could probably be a very good kind of shutdown defensive defenseman at the NHL level who is a true top four, or maybe even top pairing kind of defenseman. The Yankee has that kind of upside. I truly think he's a great player and could possibly be a very, very big piece to this Rangers team going forward in the future, but he's got a long way to get there. You know, the, the floor is definitely quite high as well. I think he'd probably at least be a number six kind of guy at the initial level, worst case scenario, but 
He's got a long way to go. He's got good size, great skating ability, good athleticism, great defensive play, good passing as well, but a pretty solid defenseman, but definitely has a long way to go. I would guess probably two years at the college level with the University of North Dakota, and then probably one year in the AHL, but then in four years, definitely could possibly be a very solid defenseman on this Rangers team. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. It helps with the channel a ton. I would really appreciate it. If you are a Rangers fan, don't forget to subscribe for daily New York Rangers content, and also don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on the Rangers drafting EJ Emery for the 30th overall pick in the 2024 NHL Draft. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.